Gentlemen, welcome to the Darkstone Dossiers with your host, Anthony Darkstone. Hello, greetings, and a very, very good evening, good afternoon, and good morning to you, depending on where you are watching from the world from somewhere in the world. And we do have on our various shows different people from different time zones from different countries uh, that that watch, and for those who don't, well. I will still say good evening, good afternoon, and, and good morning, because it's then taped and, and people watch it at different times of the day. <laughs> uh, I'm privileged today, in fact, to have a wonderful gentleman with us, uh, Steve Short, and I'm very grateful to the secretary of the Magic Circle, Catherine Rhodes, uh, for putting me in touch with him. And uh, we, we've had some wonderful conversations. And as you will see, he has an incredible sense of humor, which I absolutely love. Before that, I would just like to acknowledge uh, a couple of people. Um, and the first one is our most illustrious president of the Society of American Magicians, Dr. Joel Zuritsky. And here he is to say a quick hello. Hello, everybody. Good. <laughs> um, and while we're here, I also see that we have one of our senior officers from the Society of American Magicians all the way from Canada, uh, Mr. Rod Chow. Here he is. Oh, say a quick, hello. Quick hello. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, today, today, Steve is our acknowledged expert on uh, certain people to do with magic, uh, giants, really, of magic. Uh, David Nixon, Johnny Hart, Terry Seabrook, uh, uh, and people of that ilk, and of course, uh, dear Ali Bongo. Uh, so Steve uh, will very shortly be talking to us about them. And why is Steve an eminent expert on it? Because he's done a lot of research and written some books on these people. So who better than to get the author himself to tell us about it? Before we do that, I appreciate there may be people watching who go, David Nixon, who's that? Um, I'm not saying he's unknown in the U.S. and other parts, but I'm saying he is perhaps not as well known as he was, shall we say, in, 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 in Britain, uh, the U.K., and you know, other places. So I think probably the best way of doing that is to show you a little clip, which I will ask Joel for in a minute. And as you watch it, I want you to remember something. This clip was done... Gosh, at least 30 years ago, maybe even longer. Um, and the technology then was not what it is now. And one of the major consultants on all of David Nixon's television shows uh, was dear Ali Bongo. And if you don't know who that is, I suggest you stop performing magic. <laughs> and go find out, then come back and perform. So I think really... Better than mine, please, when you watch this clip, it really is astounding when you consider how long ago this was. So I will now ask uh, Joel if he'll be kind enough to play the clip of David Nixon. What kept you? Oh, don't muck about. Do I look all right? Oh, you look lovely. You're positively radiant. Yeah. yeah. What's this about you having some beautiful birds on the show tonight? You mean Norman Barrett's budgery guy? Oh, then. <laughs> yeah, I saw them in the makeup room when I went to get your comb just now. And I've got Anita Harris, of course. Oh, right? of course, she's always lovely, Super. isn't she? Yeah. The only thing is she won't believe it's really magic that I do. She thinks it's tricks. Oh, no. Mm. You astonish no. me. You don't happen to have a little miracle I could really... David, have, have I ever let you down? Of Not course lately, I've no. for you. If I could borrow your handkerchief, I'll show you how it works. Oh, this one? This one, yeah. yeah. Okay, help yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Well... All you do is you take this handkerchief yeah. and you tie a simple knot in it, like this. Yes. And then you say the magic words. Now, these are rather special magic words, David, oh, okay. and they're very exclusive. I've never said them out loud before. Couldn't you tell me? Well, I'll do it for you. Okay. Just this one. Yeah. Don't tell anybody. Yes. The words are Hewish Episcopi. Get away. And Except the I... handkerchief unties itself like that, you see. Fantastic. Could I do that? Do try that one. Here you are. Oh, I'd love to. Oh, thank you. That's it. On the That's set, it. please. I'm on. Yeah. What were those? Hewish 
a biscuit. Here is your biscuit, mate. Thanks very much. And David, yeah, good luck. Thanks, mate. Bye now. Wow. You see what I mean from all those years ago? There was no real, you know, technology like we have now. Well, I think the time has come for me now to uh, introduce our wonderful guest, uh, and he will kind of more or less take it from here, and I'll nudge him from time to time. I probably won't need to do a lot of that because he really is an expert on all these people that I've mentioned before. So, ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome uh, visually or like that or by the hand clap from Zoom using using one of the reactions uh, to uh, Mr. Steve Short. Stephen. Stephen. Okay, Mr. Stephen Short. Yes, take Lovely. two. <laughs> nice to see you all. Nice to see you too. I'm glad you're here. Yes. Well, that, oh. that, cl that clip was using what we know now, now known as green screen or chroma key as it was in those days and Ali Bongo told me that would take like a whole day to, to sort out whereas now that would all be done with a, a flip of a switch in about two seconds. Quite astonishing when you consider um, you know how long ago that was done because he did make a lot of inroads on his TV shows didn't he Steve with a lot of he, things. Yeah, He, 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 he certainly did. I've, I've been a um, professional magician now, believe it or not, for 45 years. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, how could a one-year-old be doing magic? <laughs> and I've, uh, yes. <laughs> so um, I've, I've, uh, I've never had a proper job in my life, which is nice. And I've, I've worked at most of the major theatres in around the country, been on the cruise ships, done close-up magic. And of course, my sort of part-time occupation hobbies writing magic books. The first one was with the wonderful Eddie Dawes with, uh, with the David Nixon book. And Eddie was, believe it or not, 95 years old on the 6th of July, just a few days ago. And very pleased to see that he was on the front cover of the Magic Circular. And we, we were very pleased to, when, we, when the Nixon book came out about 10 years ago, we were very pleased to, to receive the you can see that the John Neville Masculine Award for Literature. So we're very, 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 very pleased to win that. Excellent! Congratulations on behalf of everybody. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's my only claim to fame, really. <laughs> if so you this, 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 this is the actual book, and uh, we got about there's about two hundred photographs. Each book. Can you see those okay? Yes, yes, that's yeah. okay. If anybody wants to see them properly, they can get in touch with you and buy the book. <laughs> um, unfortunately, it's it sold out many years ago. I know that's what you I, told me. Yes, yes. I, I've only got I've only got th uh, two copies in a special edition myself. But uh, shall, shall I tell you a bit about David? Please. Let's. Uh, should we have Should we have a picture of um, the, the Nixon family taken a few years ago? Well, not last year. There we are. This, this is uh, Viv Vivian. D David's wife is on the, the right-hand side, holding holding my Johnny Hart book, doing a bit of publicity for me. And Ma Man Mandy is sitting next to me, Ma uh, David's daughter Mandy. And on the far left is my wonderful wife Carla. And and this is all. This is us all having afternoon tea. At the Grand Theatre, uh, Grand Hotel in Eastbourne, and it was during the IBM British Ring Convention last year. So I, I invited them down, and we had afternoon tea. We had a, we had, we had a good a good chat. So that that's the uh, Vivian and Mandy, and we soon made the cakes and sandwiches disappear in in, in a flash. So thank you thank you for that photograph. And so, so I, I gave uh, Vivian the, the, the Johnny Hart book, and surprise, surprise, she had a few little presents for me. One of them was this. She had a whole whole bag of gifts for me. Oh wow! This this is the card that David was presented when he appeared at the Royal Variety performance in 1978. 
So, uh, sorry to interrupt you just for a second, Steve. Uh, I just want to explain for some of our friends who may not know what that is. The Royal Variety performance is held at the London Palladium, or was held at the London Palladium, and really, really top acts from both sides of the Atlantic were, you know, invited to take part. So just, just to fill in that little background. Yeah. There, there, there's the certificate as well, all, all signed. So that, that, that was quite, and that was his, his second appearance. And also, I had the program, the yeah. end, war performance, 19, 1978. And also, uh, in this particular show, was a young gentleman, ah. <laughs> Mr. Daniels. Paul Daniels. And he, 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 was, he was just about to sort of start his, his career. And David Nixon on that particular show wasn't actually doing any uh, any of his act. He was just doing like, like a little walk-on spot with some other uh, famous people. They just walked on the stage and waved, and then walked off. But Paul Daniels was booked to do it, do his act. And David was very ill at the time. And Paul Daniels knocked on David's dressing room door, and said well you know I, i'm i'm the, the new the new sort of magician and um i hope i'm not sort of taking the limelight away from you and and david nixon said to him yes well uh I, i've had my time now, now it's yours and then sadly two weeks later david had, had passed away but he was born, as i say he'd be david would be a hundred this year mm -hmm. if you're alive and he was, his actual name was David Porter Nixon, and he's born on the 29th of December, 1919, in London. And his, fa his father was a lawyer, uh, but uh, was an amateur magician. And he would teach David the uh, multiplying billiard balls and sort of simple tricks like that. Uh, d d what tr trick had his imagination of really was um, a book by Stanley Collins called Deceptive Conceptions in Magic. And he also received the Ernest Shaw magic set from his auntie Gertie from number 30. I made them 30 bit up, but it was, it was his auntie Gertie. <laughs> and when he was a youngster, his dad, David's dad would take him to masculine and advance shows in London, where he would see all the illusions. And the illusion that triggered his imagination off was the Dizzy Limit, which um, it had different names, but it's where the girl goes into a net, is raised up, and a big flash, and the net unfolds, and the girl has disappeared. And uh, David Nixon bought the rights from the Davenports, who owned the rights, to, to use that, that illusion. But he, he, it, David had a job at um, Henley Telegraph Works in, in London, uh, it wasn't a fascinating job, but he was delighted when he found out that the uh, factory had a concert party. So he, he joined the concert party and sort of start, started doing shows. And then when war broke out, he, he couldn't join the RAF, which is what he wanted to do, because he, he had early health issues. So he, he auditioned for ENSA. O old, older viewers and listeners may know ENSA which was the Entertainment National Service Association. Uh, some rather cruelly called it every night something awful. And that's where David learned to have a, a compact act. Obviously he couldn't cart around big illusions and boxes. So he'd work with cards and silk handkerchiefs and, and ropes and things like that. When, when we did the research, we discovered a 30, 40 letters that he'd typewritten to his parents back home. And it was quite an interesting story, not about necessarily about magic and entertainment, but about how the war was was, was coming along. And d during the time he was in Ensa uh, entertaining the troops, he came across another entertainer, another magician called Ned Williams, who you may know as Robert Harbin. And then when, when he, when he finished joining the army, he, he got to started doing summer shows and things like that. And one summer show was in Torquay, 
and he was working for a producer called Hedley Claxton. And Hedley Claxton had many, many shows going on during the, during the summer at different uh, seaside resorts all over the UK. And he would always give presents to every, every act that was on all these shows all over the country. And to save a lot of trouble, he would buy one present, but he'd buy it all in bulk. So they had all the same present each. Unfortunately, during David Nixon's season, it was hairbrushes. He, uh, he, was, he was a member of the Magic Circle. He joined the Magic Circle in 1938, and he was also the, uh, the vice president in 1977, and he won the Masculine Award in 1971. So he had a big uh, connection with the, the Magic Circle. When he started doing TV shows, uh, he was he's mainly um, a, a theatre entertainer, doing summer shows and pantomimes, things like that. When he, when he started doing TV shows, he started to sort of move about and work big. And the, and the TV producer said, when you're, when you're doing your shows on television, imagine that you are working to two people. And when he got the viewing figures, he realised he only was working to two people. That was one of David Nixon's jokes to himself. What really made him famous was he, he'd done bits of TV, but he got a job for a British TV quiz show or game show called What's My Line? And I think we have a photograph of What's My Line? And there it is. That's David on the far left. And then next to him is Lady Isabel Barnett. And next to Lady Isabel Barnett is Barbara Kelly. And next to them at the end is Gilbert Harding. They're on the panel. And the idea was, for those who don't know the programme, What's My Line, it started off as an American TV show. And the idea was that a, a member of the general public with a, usually an, an unusual occupation would come on and mime what they did for a living. And the panel uh, had to ask a question with a sort of a yes or no answer from the contestant to try and work out what the uh, job was of the of the guest. Eamon Andrews was the, the the chairman, but they had very unusual occupations. Uh, there was a, 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 a crow's foot splicer, a Brussels sprout trimmer. But the famous one of all was a saga maker's bottom knocker. But we won't go into that. Uh, during the show, David didn't do any magic because this was a, a, a quiz game show. But that really made him made him well known. And then he started getting bigger bigger TV shows and bigger bigger theatre shows. Uh, he, he appeared at the North Pier Theatre in Blackpool, which had a, a very long. For those of you who know Blackpool had a very long pier to get from the the road, the promenade to the, to the theatre, which is at the end of the pier, was quite a long walk. And it used to take David two hours to get from the promenade to the theatre. Not because it was so long, but because of all the autograph hunters. So he got a bit tired of that, although he loved, he loved his fans and the audience, but he wanted to get, get on and do his work. So he, he came up with a cunning plan so he, he put on a false beard, uh, bo borrowed a, a wheelchair from a local hospital and wheeled himself down to the pier. But unfortunately, everybody recognised him because he forgot to put a hat on and everybody recognised his famous bald head. So what, what, what smile arm really, really made him famous? And then as he started to get his big TV shows, he had the wonderful Ali Bongo as his magic advisor. And I think we've got a picture of Ali Bongo. There he is. With the turb oh there he is. look at that turban with his surp surprise face. So th this is 1970. He started his long contract with Thames Television. And when I was writing the book with Eddie Dawes, I spent two whole separate days with, with Ali on different occasions. And he gave me lots of lots of information about working with with David. And he reckoned that he he devised and worked out over two hundred effects for all the different shows on TV. 
uh, some, he gave me some notes, and I had to, I had to phone him up and said, I said, Ali, what, what's this note? It says E O P O, E O P O. I said, what's that stand for? He said, oh, that's end of part one. <laughs> and he made all these end of part one tricks. So, for instance, one, he would have, have a tray, he'd sprinkle some matches onto the tray, cover it up with a cloth. When he took the cloth away, the matches spelt out end of part one. So then, then that would go into adverts, and then after the adverts, he'd carry on with the, the rest of the show. He, he said that David was a very, uh, a great guy to work with, uh, never lost his temper. The only, the only way that he knew if David was a bit uptight about something, uh, David would, would sort of put his hand on his forehead and say, oh boy. And then Ali knew that something was up and wasn't quite right. Ali, Ali told me some funny stories about, uh, about working on the show. One was they were doing the slim version of the soaring in half trick. And this is on television on, on a recording. And they were doing all that the, the girl goes in the box, the, the blades go in. It, when, um, when they turn it round after Ali's switched the feet, they turn it around so quickly that one of the false feet goes flying off into the air <laughs> and lands on the floor. So obviously they had to re redo that the, for the actual broadcast. Bef before Ali Bongo was magic advisor to David, believe it or not, Billy McComb was an advisor for a while. And Ali told me the story about a trick that was invented by uh, Harry Reeve, who, who sadly just passed away just a, a day or so ago. And he invented a trick called uh, Treasury Transpo, where a, a pound note, if you remember those, or a dollar bill would go into a uh, two pieces of perspex, three, foot, uh, three by five, and then the, the, the notes would, would change places after the, uh, an audience member had signed them. And Billy McCone went to the, the BBC props department to say, I, I want this, uh, a bit of perspex or plexiglass, as Americans would call it, uh, three by five. When he went the next day to pick up the piece of perspex, it was three foot by five foot. <laughs> <laughs> so Billy McCombe had to chip a bit off and go to his own workshop and, and make, make it the right size himself. Some, some viewers here on this meeting will know a program called Dad's Army. And one of the, one of the characters in Dad's Army was Clive Dunn, who played the part of Corporal Jones, and he was invited onto the show to uh, play the part of Corporal Jones. Uh, Mr. Mannering, Mr. Mannering, Mr. Mannering, and all that sort of stuff, and playing the part of Corporal Jones. Don't panic, don't panic, one of his catchphrases. Uh, and he came on to help David with a trick, and the trick on this particular occasion was instead of uh, using a pack of cards, David had sausages. So he would shuffle the sausages and Ali Bongo came up with this wonderful idea of instead of a card sword, it was a, an, an, um, an umbrella sword. And the idea was instead of the cards going up in the air, the, the sausage went up in the air, but behind the counter, behind the counter, unseen by the, 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 the viewers, David would stick on the science sausage on the end of the pointed ferrule on the, the end of the, uh, the umbrella. The thing was, when Clive Dunn threw the sausage up in the air and David put the umbrella up in the air, he caught two more sausages on the end of the umbrella. <laughs> <laughs> but quick, quick as a flash, Clive Dunn said, Oh, Mr. Nixon, that's very good because in the home guard we do everything in triplicate. <laughs> So he, he, he made a quick, uh, quick quip of that. And what other stories are there? Oh, there's a lovely story when they were in in uh, China doing a show, and Vivian Nixon, David's wife, uh, Ali Bongo, they all went out to do the, these shows in China. And they stayed in the same hotel. And a, as they were going, a, Ali Bongo went off to bed early, and D David and Vivian stayed up a bit later. 
and they passed Ali Bongo's door. And on the door handle, Ali Bongo had put his breakfast requirements. And Ali was quite a healthy eater, and he, he just ticked orange juice and a cup of tea. And Vivian said to David, shall we? And Vivian, <laughs> Vivian got a pen out and ticked every single box. <laughs> oh, <laughs> And the, 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 fo the following day, they, they said, oh, Ali, do you want to come out for lunch with us? And Ali said, no, I can't. I've had this great big breakfast. <laughs> so that, that's the, the lovely Ali Bongo. We've got, we've got a picture of Terry Seabrook. There it is. There's Terry Seabrook with the glasses. I think a lot of international viewers here today will know Terry Seabrook. Absolutely. He's the one, can he, I? He, he's the one so, with the sorry, Steve. Can I yeah. just say that uh, for many, many years in our publication for the Society of American Magicians, which is called M U M, uh, which is an acronym for Magic Unity Might, uh, Terry had a column for many, many years in there, and he would always finish it with one sentence or phrase called "Break a Thread." Um, he he's actually reasonably well known in the U.S and um, has been to SAM conventions and so on. So, um, yeah, I just thought I'd mention that considering, you know, we are a Society of American Magicians production here. So, yes, sorry to cut across, just a little bit of information. Uh, Anthony, do you know where, where they're standing in front of? Do you know what? It looks so familiar, and I can't for the life of me think where it is. I'm going to guess part of the castle, I think. Correct. Ah, okay. You've won a free prize. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the tea bag in the post here. Thank you so much. <laughs> so t t this is um, t towards the end of David's life because you can see it looks a bit looks a bit gaunt in that photograph. Uh, ne next to David is his daughter Mandy, and the other side of David is comedian Joe Baker. So Terry Seabrook was working at the castle, do, doing his, his shows, and David knew he was very ill, and he wanted to take Mandy to, to Disney. And so they went over to see Terry at the Magic Castle, and Terry said, oh, don't bother about hiring a car. I'll, I'll take you in my car, and we all go to Disney together. And so they're walking around, going on the rides, and having lots of fun. And M Mandy said to her dad, isn't this wonderful, dad? There's nobody here to pester you because he was virtually completely unknown in America. And David said, hang on a minute. I think you've spoken too soon. And a whole crowd of people came over to the three of them, completely ignored David and said to Terry, you were great last night at the Magic Castle. <laughs> so so they had a great time. Uh, I've got I've got a picture, but I got to know Terry quite well. I've got a picture with Terry. Uh, that, that's Terry with the glasses. As you as you can see by my photograph, that was during my cake eating days. <laughs> yeah. But uh, now I've lost a bit of weight. So that was Terry, and I, I I went to visit Terry when he he was ill in hospital, on his on his last days, and we were talking about writing the Billy McComb book. Sadly, he passed away, um, and then I think somebody else has now written a book about Billy McComb, which came out uh, a few years ago. Terry, Terry was absolutely lovely. I do have a photograph. I'm not going to show it. I'm not going to put it on Facebook or anywhere else. Uh, it was in New Orleans. After the SAM convention in New Orleans, Gary Hughes at the time was either president or just finished being president. And we were at his home in the swimming pool, and there was Terry standing up in the swimming pool, smoking his famous pipe, standing oh, yeah. in the swimming pool, smoking his pipe. <laughs> he, was, he was indeed a character. Rest <laughs> he <his> was. <laughs> uh, so he, he was great. And an, an, another of David's friends was this gentleman, which we've got a picture of. I, I expect many... This is Harold Taylor, who I think was sort of quite well, well, sort of well-known-ish in, in America, perhaps, and, and around, around the world doing, doing lectures all over the place. And Harold Taylor appeared 
on a, a David Nixon TV show. And they also appeared at the, the Dome Theatre in Brighton in 1976 in a show called uh, Hocus Pocus with David Nixon. Uh, Harold was the compere, Ali Bongo was doing his, his act. And, and another great act on the bill was, if anybody remembers, Tony Shelley and Elizabeth with them an uh, act called Magic a la Carte, which is, which is a, a great act. So that's Harold Taylor. They, they used to call him Three Tricks Taylor because he, 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 he allegedly made a whole career out of doing three tricks. It's not quite true, but uh, Three Tricks Taylor. <laughs> so that's Harold and, and David together. There we go. That's, that's me. Uh, David introduced the unsuspecting British public to this character. I've got a picture of David with him. 1967. That's Basil Brush. I think he was probably only known only known in Britain. There he is. So 1967. Uh, he's on a show called Now for Nixon, and the public was created by a, a guy called Peter Furman, and the operator was uh, a Welsh actor called Ivan Owen. And he, he would sit under the counter, a bit like Ali Bongo during the Today Prediction shows. And Ivan Owen would, would be operating the, the mouth movement and the tail. And he did the voice as well. Boom, boom! And have a very um, distinctive laugh. Ah, ah, ah! And he'd call him Mr. Nixon. Now, Mr. Nixon, what are we going to do now? And Ivan Owen based the voice on the character actor called Terry Thomas. There's a bit sort of, oh, hello, Mr. Nixon, and all that sort of stuff. And that, that they would do tricks together, and they would they would appear in summer shows, pantomimes, all over the place. The thing was that Ivan Owen was not reclusive, but he didn't want anybody to, to know who he was. Um, the, the next picture is a very rare photograph of Ivan Owen. There he is. That's Ivan Owen holding Basil. And he didn't want the, the press or television or newspapers to find out his identity because he said it would spoil the illusion if they knew who, who the operator was. So he, he could walk around the street and let nobody have, you know, have the faintest idea who he was. And Ali Bongo said that, that the puppet was absolutely completely threadbare all held together with gaffer tape and, and, and all into bits. He did have another Basil made, a brand new one, and he tried it out once or twice, but he, he, he said it wasn't Basil. So he never knew, he never used the new one, and he always used to use the which he, puppeteers would know. He got attached to the, 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 the original one. One story was when they, during the summer season, they, um, Ivan Owen and Mandy and David Nixon went out, went out for a meal and of course nobody knew who Ivan Owen was and so he, until he started laughing in his basil brush laugh and everybody turned around and knew exactly who he was. <laughs> so he, 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 he made Basil famous really and Ivan Owen did say to David, oh uh, would you be interested in coming in on the, 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 the basil brush enterprise because he, he made an absolute fortune from toy shop sales and comic man annuals and what have you and david said oh no that, that's your that's your business uh, he may have regretted it because i've known died a multi-millionaire <laughs> now a another regular on the nixon show was the wonderful actress and singer anita harris and we have a picture of anita coming up she was a she was a, a regular on the show there she is being sawn in half, and in 1975 she appeared in every edition of Series Three. So as, as well as singing, uh, she would be sawn in half here, uh, and even zigzagged on one occasion. So she she appeared in, in many of the shows. The the, the in the 70s that the magicians as guests, uh, David would have. Um, many singers and comedians at the time, and this is, I guess, all, all well known. 
and he would also have at least one magician on, on every show. And I was uh, in the back of the Nixon book, we, Ali Bonga gave us the list of every act that was ever in the show. He also gave me copies of every single trick that David did. And they were all categorized, liquid tricks, car tricks. But how about that, eh? That wonderful, wonderful, rare photograph of the gentleman who did both the voice and the handling of Basil Brush. Um, remarkable, remarkable thing. Um, and as uh, Steve was saying, um, you know, the man made a fortune out of it from what, what we would now call all the merchandising, um, you know, the, the, the puppets and other, and, other, and other things like that. Uh, some of you may remember one about the same time. It was from Italy called Topo Gigio, uh, but that required three or four people in black art to work. It remains upon me to tell you a little joke. There was this onion. No. <laughs> uh, so we sh we, I shall do my best to keep you amused uh, and perhaps uh, you know chat about a little bit about the foregoing of what Steve was talking about the the TV series, the beginning of how when David was young, if I can reiterate, and how he sort of got into magic, and then basically quite an accolade for anybody to be invited to perform um, on a Royal Command performance, which was, if my memory serves, always at the London Palladium. Have we got the uh, an early photograph of David, uh, an early publicity portrait of him? So this, this is a, a publicity photograph of David Nixon. Mm. So ima imagine this is just the start of my talk, mm. because when I do my live talks, this always gets a big laugh. So this is David with his publicity photograph. But could you imagine that when he was a toddler, he looked like this? <laughs> well, we did promise folks some very rare pictures, and yeah. we have this being one of them. Mm. Who, who, who'd have thought it? Yep. So na now um, we go, there, so there's David, and there's David when he was two or three or something like that. So we've done Terry C, but we've done, we've done, we are uh, Anita Harris. We've talked about Anita Harris, have we? We yeah. have, where ah, she was ah. being sawn in half with an electric sawn in half. Mm. Yes. Uh, I, I, I did the saw in the woman in half and uh, I used to practice at home. Now I've got two half sisters. <laughs> As Basil would say, boom, boom. <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the girl I used to saw in half has now happily retired in Birmingham and Blackpool. A softer boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah they get worse. <laughs> oh. I, I know, what I was talking about Ali Bongo's comprehensive list, wasn't I? Yes. And he, he wrote this wonderful list of all the tricks that David did, all the, all the guest stars, so we could compile it in, in the index of the book, we could compile a nice, interesting uh, <clears throat> contribution to who was on the show. But the, the, the magicians read like a who's who. Uh, Al Coran, Robert Harbin, Alan Shackson, Ken Brook, Fred Capps, Colin Rose with his wonderful fire act. Uh, the sadly missed, recently deceased Norm Nielsen with his floating violin. Pierre Brahma, uh, Al Carthy, one of my favorite acts, Professor Al Carthy, the, the wonderful robot act. Finn John with his floating ball. Uh, also recently, sadly passed away, Marvin Roy and Carroll were on the David Nixon show. Pat Page appeared. Uh, Paul, Paul Daniels, before he became really well known, appeared on the, one of the TV shows. And the, and the Morettis as well. Uh, that was just a few that I picked out from, from the book. So it's like, it was a bit like a who's who. Uh, the, 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 um, guest magicians that he had. Sadly, as you say, Steve, uh, 1961, yeah. David gave the award. You, you're doing David, good. What, we've got a picture here. I'm still here. We've got a picture of David given an award. So mm. this is, this is uh, David Nixon giving the award to the first young magician of the year in 1961, Johnny Hart. And Johnny told me while I was writing uh, Johnny Hart's biography 
that when David gave him the award, he said, Johnny, be careful. Uh, the base has just become loose on the award. <laughs> so this is, uh, that's Johnny Hart, first young magician of the year, age 17 years. And this is the Johnny Hart book, which came out last year. Lots of colour photographs all about his wonderful life and career. Now, is that available from you, Steve, or have you still only got two copies of that as well? The hard copy is sold out, mm -hmm. but I do have on the johnnyhartbook.com website the um, the ebook, Johnny Hart ebook. Okay. So have, have a look on the, web, the website for that. Mm -hmm. Now we've got a, a picture of uh, David with Eamon Andrews. Um, this is uh, an American TV show transferred to the, the um, British TV shows called This Is Your Life. And it was filmed, the, the catch, as they call it, was filmed at the Magic Circle Corners headquarters in London, Cheney Mews. There's the picture. And the, 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 tr the trick was, this is uh, 1973, 26th of December, and Ali Bongo devised this trick where Eamon Andrews would be switched in a Santa sack with uh, an actress called Penny Meredith, who appeared on many of the shows. The trick went on a bit longer than Eamon thought, and he ended up trussed in this sack, almost unable to breathe. <laughs> and eventually he popped out of the sack, completely breathless, to utter the words, David Nixon, master of magic, an all-round entertainer. <laughs> this is your life. <laughs> and it was quite a surprise to David. And then, then he got whisked off to the, to the studios where all the chairs were put out and all the, all the guests would come on. And Ali, Ali Bongo came on, uh, David's family, Anita Harris. But Basil Brush came on on a counter, and they opened the curtains, Basil Brush was there, and Basil Brush invited to David Cump to come up to the counter to do a, a balloon trick, and luckily David remembered, um, the script was written so that Basil Brush gave David all the cues, so he knew exactly what the trick was, and, and David went into it, although, although he was in a state of shock, being on This Is Your Life, he managed to get through the trick with, with Basil, which is quite amazing. And the is is two colleagues from um, the, the, the quiz show What's My Line, Isabel Barnett and Barbara Kelly were on, and also Tommy Cooper and Normal Wisdom, as well as Robert Harbin came on and said a few words. But the, the, the following year, David got his own back because he invited Eamon Andrews to come on his magic show and instead of Eamon Andrews being sawn in half, Ali Bongo came on with a cushion. David Nixon whipped the cloth away with the red book. And David Nixon said to Eamon Andrews, Eamon Andrews, this is your life. <laughs> so that, so he, he got his own back. So I, I, I went to meet, meet Vivian. And on this table was six foot long, perhaps, big, big mahogany table. And you couldn't see the table because it was about six inches high of programs, photographs, memorabilia. Absolutely wonderful. Oh, we, we got over 200 photographs for the book. And wow. the duplicates all, all didn't work for the book. So, so that was good. And um, amongst all, all the, the bits and pieces, we found a couple of pages that David had typed out with his experience of being on This Is Your Life. Hmm. and he, he put the heading the surprise of my life and it was a week later and he explained all how we how we felt about the experience thinking I can't believe my wife kept this a secret from me <laughs> you know <laughs> all this time because he had all these mysterious phone calls uh, from the from the um, researchers to speak to Vivian and then then they went to a, a planning meeting with Ali and the and the TV producer to do the segment where Eamon came out the sack and of course he realized that he was the only person that wasn't in on it with, with the real plan <laughs> and on the way to the studio uh, he went in the car with Eamon 
And he said to Eamon, oh, tell me what, what's, um, who's going to be on. And he said, no, I'm not going to tell you. It's going to be a lo lovely surprise. But um, he, he, wasn't, he was interested in magic to a certain extent, but it wasn't, he wasn't a magic, magic mad. And he had a few magician friends. But when he, when he got home, he had uh, many, many hobbies. He was a, a very good chess player. In fact, he did a, a TV series called Checkmate. And he also liked uh, photography. Um, uh, he, he had a boat, which he, he'd go on. And he was a, a bit of a musician. He played the double bass when he was a youngster. So he had lots of hobbies to, to keep occupied outside of magic and entertainment. Now, so that was, that's, this is your life. As I said, it'd be, it'd be 100 this year. But I think the, the secret of David's success was his personality. He had great, great to charm, instantly likable. And he treated all his volunteers with, with great care and charm. And it wasn't the tricks which he liked, it was him. Hmm. And of course, he had a great team behind him. He had his, his script writers, uh, Royston Mayo, who was his TV producer, actually called him the father of TV magic. And Ali Bongo creating all the, the effects for David. And George Martin, who was his friend, was his script writer. And George Martin was also, not to be confused with the Beatles, George Martin. Hmm. This is George Martin, the casual comedian, as he was called. And George Martin also wrote the scripts to the Basil Brush shows when he was with David or even when Basil had his own TV shows. Uh, something else I forgot to, to show you that which I got from Vivian in her little bag of goodies was this. And it's a handkerchief, a pocket handkerchief, stolen from David Nixon. And D D David would give out give these out to, as, as presents to uh, fam, fans and friends and what have you. Also the tie I'm wearing was, was a gift. This is uh, David's tie that, that Mandy, uh, that uh, Vivian gave me. M many, many years ago on eBay, I bought the David Nixon magic box and he had a membership card and that I wonder if anybody knows who this magician is. But the, the trouble was, all the tricks inside here didn't have any instructions. There was no instructions at all. So I, I, I took them to the Magic Circle one day with me and asked Ali Bongo what they were. And he, he went through them all and told me exactly what each trick was. What else would you like to know, Anthony? I think I've gone through all my... You, you have indeed. I mean, goodness, you, 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 managed, you managed to do that. I, I have. Um, I know you and I have talked about it, and I said, I'll get round to it, I'll get round to it, I'll get round to it. Well, I did get round to it. Uh, and Joel actually braved the traffic in New York to go from one end to the other to come here and manage to do this. So I have a little surprise for you, speaking of rare photographs. Uh, so speaking of the magic circle and Ali Bongo, I am going to ask, uh, and yes, I am going to send you these photographs, Steve. <laughs> uh, I'm going to ask Joel to put up the first one uh, in whatever order. Now, many of us who've been at the circle will know uh, the, the young man uh, over there is uh, Angelo Carbone. Uh, the painting, of course, is Dear Ali. And that appeared on the cover of the Linking Ring uh, in, in the, the, the month following uh, his, his passing. Um, and that hangs, as some of us will know, um, sort of sideways opposite to the bar of the Magic Circle. In its new, in its new place, obviously. Um, it's moved since, since um, Steve was talking about it. So that's one. And the next one is... Uh, ah! Yeah, we were all younger then. My very, very dear, dear friend and mentor, uh, Pat Page. I first met him, God, 
gone well over 50 years ago when he worked the counter at Davenport yeah. when it was opposite the uh, British Museum in Great Russell Street. <laughs> and obviously, you've all recognized um, Ali sitting there. This is in J. Scott Berry's house in Falkland and Fife in Scotland. Um, the evening before we went to do one of the biggest gigs ever done, about 15,000 people over the weekend um, at uh, Falkland Palace. So there's a picture uh, also that I'm going to send to you, Steve. And the next one, in no particular order, um, it just comes up as Joe wants. Ah, I don't know if we can, yeah, okay. I particularly like this one, and I'll tell you why, because I get to brag. I really do. On the left-hand side, I mean, obviously, that's me in the white jacket, etc., in the Anthony Darkstone character. Um, this was at another gig in Scotland the following year at Stirling Castle. Also, Pat was there. And the producer came up to us and said, well, we've got a bit of time. and There are a lot of people milling around outside. It's a lovely day. Can you come out and do something? And I went, okay. So I gathered a deck of cards and my haunted key that I carry with me everywhere. That's another story for another time. And I started playing with it by a group of people. And before I knew it, and nothing was rehearsed. Ali turns up in that lovely, what I call his star jacket. Um, some of you will recognize that jacket. You will know what I mean. And he came in there and then did the key on his finger. Until this day, I give you my solemn word. I have no idea how he did it. The key actually knotted itself. There's a solid metal key. There was knot in it at the end. So I'm bragging by saying... As far as I know, I'm the only person ever to have done a double act with Ali Bongo. <laughs> there are many, many <laughs> yes. stories about that. Um, and uh, uh, next to that picture on the right-hand side is at Falkland Palace at the dinner the night before, where he's very kindly awarding me, and there were some other people who got it as well, the uh, Circle of Palace Magicians Award. Uh, down below the one where I'm doing the double act with him, if you can see Ali wearing the bow tie on the far left with a kind of beige jacket like this, uh, Dear Pat next to him, Shirley Ray, a name that many, many people in England will know, uh, some other guy who should be nameless. <laughs> and then standing next to me is my dear, dear pal from Houston, Texas, Scott Wells, who also happens to be uh, a member of our SAM International Assembly, which, by the way, if you would like to join, please contact me. Uh, you don't have to be an American to join. We have a number of people from the Magic Circle, many eminent people, I may add, who are members of the SAM International Assembly. And the bottom picture is, of course, dear Ali, uh, again, uh, Pat Page, myself, and, and, and Scott Wells. And I think we just very quickly shoot to the other one. Uh, I want to give a bit of a surprise to Steve. So I dug them out. Oh, gosh, it's too tiny. We can't. Can we? Yeah. Oh, it's very blurry. But I can tell you what's going on there um, because the, the, the night before during the gala show, you're just going to have to use your imagination. Um, something went wrong between somebody's act and they had to do something and kill time. So Ali, as the MC came on, took his teeth out in front of the audience and did this whole golem from Lord of the Rings. Hey, am I pretty? I can't do it. But he did it. And then we were outside milling around <laughs> the next day, and somebody came up and said, could you do your golem thing again? So Ali, being dear Ali, just took his teeth out <laughs> for this person and just did the golem. And am I pretty? And he did the whole face. And I will quickly add, for those who don't know, he was a superb artist. He spoke fluent French. Uh, he was born in India. He's a direct descendant of uh, the movie Braveheart, uh, William Oliver Wallace, and that actually was his name. He won't mind us telling people that now. Uh, this is from a pal of mine called Mike Wilkie, who does a lot of cartoons, and if you read The Linking Ring, uh, a lot of Mike Wilkie's magic-related cartoons appear there, and he did this of Ali, so I kind of got it, and I thought, you know what, uh, I'll, surprise, I'll surprise Steve with that. And I'm not sure if we have another one, probably not. Uh, I can't recall. 
Yes, ah, there ah. he is, Ali, of course, being Ali. Uh, mm. Some of you will know in Scotland, and I hope to goodness I pronounced this correctly, trues, which are tartan trousers. But in that particular picture, I'm sorry to say I don't have the rest of it. He, he was actually wearing a kilt uh, at one of the sort of dinner things, and he came up and, you know, did, did something. And I think I should say something, and some of the older gentlemen about my age, or possibly slightly younger, or maybe even older, will know that Ali had an incredible brain, but his props were incredibly simple. He, he would do the most amazing things with, for example, a matchbox or a bit of cardboard or something like that. And I've no idea how he did it. The pom-pom sticks he made into an art form. I'm not sure if there are any... Uh, YouTube videos or any others around and if you do find one please let me know uh, I've watched him do it live it's an art form to watch him do pom-pom sticks as he did everything but that was you know registered do we have any another one Joel or we I think that's about it isn't it yeah ah I found this speaking of rare pictures um, I put a post up about something and Philip Pound who is dear Pat's son-in-law, because he's married to Pat's daughter, Janet, uh, put this picture up. Uh, as far as I know, one of those gentlemen on the far right, and I think it's the one with the waistcoat or the vest, uh, is Tony Corinda. That's Pat right. Page, Pat Page, uh, with a pen in his pocket at the top. And the gentleman on the very far left, yes, you guessed it, Ali Bongo with hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the the the, the, one, the one on the, the other end is Dick Chevelle. Ah, of course, I knew it was Dick something, but I didn't want to get it wrong. Yeah, well done. It is. Thank you so much. Yes. So yeah. this is this is this is this that, is that 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 is pretty that is pretty that is pretty Chevelle's magic shop, I suppose. I believe it is. I don't know. I have never been there. I don't. I don't know it. But uh, how about that? I mean, yeah. Corinda, Pat Page, and Ali Bongo with hair. <laughs> I think it's about it. Or do we have another one? To surprise you with Steve that's that's what we got that's what we got okay fair enough well that so I just thought I'd show you those and they will uh, they that, are that's what one that wonderful I love those I thought you might it, it was a, a, when, 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 when I was youngster my my dear late mother took me to Davenport's as you were saying opposite the British Museum and Pat Page yep. was was behind the counter and then when I, I went to Ali Bongo's funeral I don't know whether there's anything on on Alison, who's uh, Ali's niece, said niece, yeah. that don't wear black or something. Mm. So I, I, I wore a sort of a, a light suit, but I wore a red bow tie. Mm. And I'll never forget Pat Page coming up to me and saying, oh, a Ali would have liked that. He would have. Yes. Yeah. He would. I mean, like... Um, I, I, did, 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 I, did, I, did I mention that I'm in the middle of writing my uh, the Ali Bongo book with uh, Raphael, yeah. my... my you, had, you, you hadn't on this show, but you told yes. me about it, and you kept yeah. saying to me, if you can find any photographs, I know you've had things and stories. Yeah, I can yeah. tell you stories about Ali and myself from Blackpool to Las Vegas, not Las Vegas, sorry, to Texas at one of the SEM conventions uh, where, where, where he appeared. Actually, wait a minute. It was New Orleans, exactly. He was there with New Orleans, yeah. Um, so it was Ali, and then another one where, sadly, there was a little incident, and then uh, some months later or a year, he was lecturing in France, um, and I, I knew the people who had booked him for the lecture, and, you know, what happened, then he came back and then sad, sadly sadly passed away. Uh, like everybody else, I mean, I could stay here from now till Christmas telling you wonderful stories about that lovely, lovely man. But you're working on your book, yes. and I know that's why you're looking for material. So anybody if, who's got if, stories if any, and pictures. If any of our, yeah, if any of our um, Zoom meeting friends here this evening knew or work with Ali, then uh, get in touch with me with any stories or photographs. That would be terrific. Yep. Ian Adair's been helping me a lot with with this, with uh, because mm -hmm. Ali Bonga was uh, involved in the Supreme Magic Company for various yes. I items and, and things, and and uh, uh, Ali would phone up Ian at, at Supreme asking for props for the the Nixon shows. Mm -hmm. But if any uh, any other guys on this meeting have got any information, that would be gratefully received. Shall we put your uh, email the, the, out? The, the, the other th the other th the other thing I didn't mention is that I'm. I'm doing my, because obviously we can't go out doing shows at the minute, so I'm doing my online online talks. I'm doing one, one on David Nixon, 
one on Johnny Hart, one on the Supreme Magic Company, which we just mm -hmm. talked about. And my other talk is the, the history of the unique magic studio with Harry Stanley. So I've got four talks that, that I'm doing online for magic societies around the, the country and around the world. I was, I was about to ask you, actually, um, if people wanted to get in touch with you, Steve, what's the best way? Uh, uh, before you, so, do, you know, if you're happy to give out your email, fine. Uh, if you're not, then we'll figure out another way uh, for people to get in touch with you to book e you for doing e this. E e email is the best. Okay. Uh, the reason e I'm asking e e is... Email is the best. The reason I'm asking is, if you say it slowly enough, what we'll do uh, when this footage goes out to actually Mark Williams, a good pal of ours in Vegas, who does all our editing, etc. And then this, this will be seen over and over and over. And, you know, people who want to get in touch with you to book a talk or send you pictures of Ali and indeed stories, etc. Uh, then I'll have him put up your email, you know, running across as you say it. So if you do it slowly, he'll be able to do that. Off you go. The floor is yours, sir. Oh, right. Info at steve hyphen shorts like a dash hyphen short dot co dot uk okay if, if you if you just google steve short magician that that will come up on the on the internet okay thank you so much yeah thank you so much so we'll, we'll have that put up on the screen of the edited tape etc which we will play in post and obviously get a copy to you without, you know, or link. Because what happens is the footage goes away. Uh, Joel, uh, as you've noticed, is doing the recording. Uh, the footage goes, uh, then the raw footage, as it were, goes to Las Vegas. Mark does all the things. And the interesting thing about Mark is that he is also a magician, apart from being a skilled editor. Uh, so he edits from a magician's perspective. Uh, so that's a kind of plus that we have. Um, and it's all a labor of love. I mean, seriously, it, you know, it, it's just amazing, just for the love and the passion for the art that we all feel. Um, so uh, I think we're probably coming to that time now where I think we've had a wonderful insight into some amazing things that uh, people don't know. And I, I'm personally and professionally pleased to have done this because it's a way of keeping for posterity, if you like, a, a, a tape somewhere that people can look at six months, six years, 10 years, whatever, and it's there. Because I think it'd be terrible, terrible, terrible to have one of the greats of magic. Uh, the fact that it was British magic is irrelevant, really, because he had so many wonderful other people on his show from Dear Norm, uh, respect and RIP to him and other people. So, you know, he was indeed an incredible legend and you brought up uh, Johnny Hart and other people won't know this but we were talking before the show with Ian uh, and I'm doubly delighted because back in oh God, 20 years ago something like that my son's 38 now he was what, 17 or 18 at the time he won the John Hart trophy in Reading we were talking with Ian about that earlier on so you know all these things kind of tie in and it, 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 it's really wonderful so I'm very grateful to you Steve for making the time uh, to come on here and, 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 and do this and share, uh, not only with everybody here, but with people who are going to be watching this in the fullness of time um, about, you know, some of this wonderful knowledge you have of these amazing people. And I'm absolutely delighted that the Magic Circle awarded you um, the awards, you and, and Dr. Edwin Dars, of course, who's a great historian, if you really amazing uh what he doesn't know you could write on the head of a pin right steve <laughs> <laughs> and have space left over <laughs> yes. Yes. yeah yeah amazing amazing how old is he now 90 something is he nine he was 95 a few days ago oh well uh, speaking of one of the greats in fact um is this a plug? No, not really. It's just information. Um, we have been working very closely with uh, a number of people at the Magic Circle. Uh, well, one in particular, the secretary. And uh, she, she's been very helpful in helping with logos and, and things like that. And, you know, just in photographs, that's Captain Roach. Uh, we have a special issue in August of MUM. Uh, which is the monthly magazine of the Society of American Magicians. Uh, this is Joel on this month's cover. 
yes? Uh, and we have in it, we have a column in there called Magic Around the World. When I say we, it's myself and Arian Black, uh, and we feature magicians from Canada in this instance, uh, Morocco, uh, the Netherlands, um, all over the place. August issue is particularly interesting, and a copy always goes to the library, and I think you'll have to talk to Laura London about this, um, where Magic Around the World is going to feature 12 Magic Circle members from around the world, not necessarily from England, included in that illustrious number of people, and I've worked hard and long on it, so you know, I'm really proud to say that. Uh, not bragging, yes I am, and I'm quite happy to brag. Um, we have wonderful people like Captain Rhodes, Matt Davies, Michael Vincent, Todd Landman, uh, oh, and David Burglass. I mean, how could you do this without David Burglass? So, yeah, well, you know, written about him. And somebody asked me not so long ago on one of the other shows, how did you have to choose these people? And you know what? It was it was really difficult. I mean, how do you choose? So I had to get ones that all did something different and were unique to their particular niche. Uh, and I already decided for cards, I have to have Michael Minton. I already decided uh, David Burglass, MBE, had to be on there. Um, and then the others were picked from their locations outside of England. They were Magic Circle members, in many cases, MIMCs with gold stars who were located in different parts of the world. Uh, a name that most of you will know, Gunnar, uh, he's featured in there, and he's from Iceland. We have Vanny Pule in there from Malta. So, yeah, so if you can grab hold of an issue, do that. If you can't, it's very easy to join the Society of American Magicians. It's really, really easy. Just get in touch with me. Both myself and Joel will sponsor you. You just need me. and That's enough. You don't need to bother the president. Uh, the cost. Oh, this is where it gets really bad. It's $55 a year, which as a crow flies in today's exchange rate, it's about 40 pounds, roughly, give or take. Uh, and there are all kinds of tons of advantages uh, to that. Um, apart from being able to use the logo, like you use the Magic Circle or IBM logos on your on your uh, websites or promo material, there are many other advantages. And I have here an expert on what kind of advantages you have, and I'm going to ask the expert to tell you. So, Joel, uh, our president, and I call him Joel, that's fine. <laughs> if you'd be kind enough to just very quickly pray, say all the lovely things we get if you join the SAM. Well, you first get the MUM magazine, which is one of the premier magazines in the world. Uh, it, not only you, you can watch it digitally, you, we actually have it now archived since 1911, every issue. We also have it indexed, so you can look up every effect since 1911. That's a lot of magic there, folks. We also have uh, a tremendous amount of videos, including Assembly V 1.1s, thousands of hours of materials and lecturers. We have the lecture series. We have uh, the podcasts. We have uh, sponsored events just like Darkstone Dossiers. We have uh, Arian Black's Magic Kitchen. Uh, we have assemblies and conventions. It is one of the most amazing events to be a member of the SAM. The energy that we have here is phenomenal. And that's what we're looking for for this year. So we and love passion. Having you. And passion. And passion. That's for sure. One, one, of, one, of, one of the things, um, and I know you were telling me, and we, we talked about this last night, um, you, uh, when we were watching the, oh, by the way, we were watching Bruce Calva last night, and a couple of other lectures uh, uh, from uh, people like Jim Steinmeier, and you, just amazing stuff. All of that's included. You, you don't have to pay any more for it, right, Joe? That, that is correct. It's all yeah. part of your membership. Apart from being catalogued, all the way through and this to the best of my knowledge and i'm not a tech person so i don't know but to the best of my knowledge it's the only place you can go to and in simple terms click rope magic and everything on rope magic will show up is that right joel that is correct or, or coin magic or whatever or yep. person's name including your own 
You know, you can find out when when is the first time you were in a magic magazine <laughs> in, yeah. in MUM. You can look up your own name. So I think, yeah, we've got another couple of other interesting projects coming up that Joel and I are talking about. And those of you who were here on our gala show on the 27th of June, it's gone. We have another one coming up um, because Joel and I did an interview in London with uh, Andrew Eborn by, by Zoom or whatever Andrew uses. And we, we talked about the gala show, but it was just for Magic Circle and SAM members, obviously, of which we have roughly about 6,000, give or take, um, all over the world, really. And we're hoping to go more and more international, which is why we have the International Assembly. Uh, and this week we've had wonderful people, uh, a name you will know, Karina Fenton, who won the Eugene Berger Award. Uh, and I made a post about that on the Magic Circle pages, and now she is a member of the SAM and indeed the International Assembly. Uh, so, you know, in good company. The International Assembly has five former IBM presidents. We even have Nanny Wilson and Mark Wilson. Um, so am I impressing you enough? I hope so. <laughs> but seriously, uh, is this a plug to come join us? The short answer is yes, because we live in times that are A, uncertain, and when we go back to whatever that word means, normal, we will have to go back with whole different mindsets. So Joel's mission as president, and I know I'm, we've been working on stuff together uh, um, before he was president and whatever, and uh, now he is, uh, and we've got other stuff coming up, is to actually make this... Uh, sorry, I'm not putting words in your mouth, Joel, because you've actually said this in uh, public, to make magic a more cohesive, a more uh, international, a more camaraderie, if you will, yes? So there's Absolutely. no real no real rivalry at all. Um, and thanks to the help of certain people who, should, who shall be nameless, uh, Joel expressed an interest in joining the Magic Circle not that long ago. And on the 27th show, uh, Noel Britton, the current president of the Magic Circle, uh, came on, uh, and we surprised Joel. I mean, I knew it was going to happen, but it surprised Joel when Noel announced on that show publicly that he'd been accepted into the Magic Circle, and probably the fastest acceptance ever. <laughs> uh, so, it, is this a plug to join the SAM? Of course it is. Um, is it going to be worth your 40 pounds? Perhaps a friggin' lootly. No question about it. Yeah. If it isn't, you know what? I'll tell you now on tape, live. I've got witnesses. I'll give you the 40 pounds out of my pocket if you don't find one benefit from it. You'll find many. Right, Joel? Absolutely. In fact, this coming Monday, um, we're having the Noel and Joel show together. We're meeting and we're coming up with ideas to, for, to, to get together with the Magic Circle and the SAM. So it's going to be an unbelievable year. We're so psyched about this. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, I think all that remains for me as a host of this show, I didn't have to do much as a director, really. It's great when you're working with a pro. It's just wonderful. Uh, just wonderful. Is to, on your behalf and indeed mine, both personally and professionally, uh, just say a really warm, warm thank you to Steve for making the time and the effort to, to come over and, and share this with us. So thank you very much indeed, Steve. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening and watching, everybody. Hope hope you enjoyed it. Do, do we have, do we have time for any questions from anybody, Anthony, or are we all tied up now? No, no. We're we're fine. Uh, if people want to just you know do something in chat or maybe just put your mic on and ask. Uh, you know, if you don't want to give a speech, but just ask something, that'll be fine. <laughs> um, otherwise, just type something up. Robert Adris says, a wonderful talk. Thank you very much. These three wonderful talk lectures, cooking show were the highlight of my weekend. Hey, you're very welcome. Oh. Yeah. And Bob, Bob Hannum, who's been a regular on a couple of our shows uh, recently, um, he, he says, Steve, it must be 35 years at least since I saw you last. Yes. Yes, we, we, we met when we were one. Yes, <laughs> you did that gag. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but it, it didn't, you didn't get a laugh the first time. Well, you did, but you couldn't see. <laughs> you couldn't hear it either. <laughs> yeah. so, every, every, everybody smiled loudly. Yes. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, if you uh, have, um, you know, 
uh, anything you want to add in chat or uh, just briefly ask something and put your mic on to do it, uh, please do so. I think Ian wants to say something. Ian has a question, yes. Marvellous. That was a lovely talk, Steve. I, I've, I'm a great close friend of Steve's and, and he comes and visits me quite often. And of course, David Nixon, marvellous personality. Uh, I knew David quite well. He stayed with me here in Biddeford at the Supreme Magic Company and we got on fine. Uh, I love Steve's methods of writing books. He, he's got very good research and goes into every detail. And, uh, you know, I've been in magic now for 70 years. I'm coming up for 80. Started when I was uh, uh, 10. Uh, and, and, you know, I had 36 wonderful years at Supreme Magic Company. So I've seen a lot of magicians over the years. And, um, you know, and it's a marvelous hobby for people that don't want to take it up professional. But it was a really good talk tonight. And uh, I, I've got the book and Steve signed it for me. So, you know, if anybody wants it, being a Scotsman, it'll be $500. Um, <laughs> no, uh, I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't get rid of it. it, it it's, it's, he signed it for me, and uh, I, um, I, I, I helped him with the, uh, the Johnny Hart book by doing the index, because um, I like doing indexes, but when I knew there was nearly 26 pages of index, <laughs> a fortnight to do yeah. everything I had to go through the whole book <laughs> the whole book you know uh, every magician every feature every place you know it, but it was good I learned a lot about it by doing the index but marvelous thanks uh, Steve and so, um, I'll keep emailing you as you do for me and uh, you can see behind me I've got props here I've got pictures and photographs of them in my magic den so I, I'm Quite comfortable here. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Oh, Ian, you've done more than just doing the index. Well, that's kind of you. You, you, you helped me a lot with the, the Johnny Hart book. Yeah. And is there a check in the post then? Uh, yes, it's been lost. <laughs> they do have things called bank transfers, Steve. <laughs> oh, d d d <laughs> yeah, don't, well, don't tell Ian that. Well, no, I just did. No, I'm going to oh. take his. I'm going to take his sides after all the lovely things he said about me all those years yeah. ago. No, no, he did. Robert Dadras, he says, uh, when do you expect the Ali Bongo book to come out? I, I think I think Raphael is is on this meeting with us. Now, Robert says, and he's just sent a message saying he bought the David Nixon book online. I'm not quite sure how or where, but apparently he has. Oh well, yes. I, well. To, uh, tell him to get in touch with him because I want to buy one as well. <laughs> okay, get in touch. You've got Steve's email, so yeah. yeah I, I, I did search around. I couldn't find any anywhere because that they, they went out of print years ago. Yeah, okay. Nice one, Robert. You but the, 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 ho hopefully, to answer the other question, the Ali Bongo book, I'm hope, hopefully may be out at the end of this year, stroke beginning of the next year, because obviously I've got nothing else to do apart mm -hmm. from... Um, my wife's insisting on uh, me painting and decorating the house. But uh -huh. I, I, try, I try and get out of that by writing the Ali Bongo book. So <laughs> I can concentrate writing on the book uh, because the Johnny Hart book and the Nixon book were in between doing shows. And I was very busy doing shows at the time. But now there's no show. So hopefully the, the Bongo book should be out end of this year, beginning of next year. Well, I, I can assure you we shall keep everybody in the SAM informed about that good yes so you know you obviously will keep in touch and you'll sort of give me a heads up whenever you know it's ready to be published or whatever yep well I, I can I can do another talk on that well that sounds like a plan we could do that why not yeah I mean my gosh can you imagine a talk on Ali Bongo good grief yeah wow <laughs> yeah uh, but, um I don't know if anyone else was, uh, Raphael was at the funeral, but uh, I, I always say to everybody that Ali Bongo's was the best funeral I've ever been to because Paul Daniels gave uh, the most wonderful eulogy and he, he started off with saying, William Oliver Wallace, his initials say it all. Wow. They do indeed. And Paul Daniels went on to do all the, the, the stories. Uh, just, just briefly before we go, one, one story was that David went to Ali Bongo's flat, un unknown to Ali, while, while he was out, and he managed to get hold of one of these 
sort of secret agent cameras on on a on a on a wire and he, he went through the letterbox with, with his, the camera on the end of a wire and poked around Ali, Ali's flat and took photographs of him inside of his flat through the letterbox <laughs> and uh, at the next meeting of the Paul Daniels show he got all the photographs developed and put them on a table and he, he said to Ali I've got this wonderful venue to do one, one of our shows from uh, have a look and Ali looked at it and thought that's the inside of my flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, 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 yeah, the, there's tons and tons and tons of stories, actually. Um, I told one the other day, uh, uh, you know, but I won't do it now. I want to do it with, with, with Ali. There's tons of them. Just amazing. You know, the, 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 I mean, he and Terry Se T Seabrook stayed up till about four in the morning in Blackpool with my son. Um, I'm talking to my son. Because uh, at the time, I think it was about 17, 17 and a half, 18, I can remember. Wait, 38 now, as I've told you. Uh, and he was a little bit miffed because uh, something went wrong and nobody covered it. And they just went to this, took this young man to one side, sat there with him till four in the morning. Uh, Terry gave up, uh, but Ali sat there till my son had calmed down. And, you know, th this was the joy and the beauty of these lovely, lovely people. Uh, the likes of which I doubt if we will ever see again. So we were, I think we we're all very blessed to have known them and interacted with them both professionally and, you know, socially as well. Uh, so, you know, yeah, it's all good, good stuff for the book, I'm sure. <laughs> Anybody else want to say a few words or shall we kind of like call it a wrap? Thanks, Anthony, for inviting me. Oh, a great, great pleasure and an honor. Thank you for accepting and being here. Um, what can I say? Well, thank you all very, very, very much uh, for being here. Uh, thank you again to Steve. I know I've done this before, but, you know, really, I think Ian's pretty much said it all, really. He's covered it beautifully and done everything in very much Steve Short style. So thank you, Steve. Uh, all remains for me um, is to wish you all uh, a wonderful weekend, um, and um, I'm sure the same will come from our most illustrious president, Dr. Joel Zaritsky. Um, and so I will bid you fond farewell and wish you a great weekend, and thank you all very much. Bye, everybody. Take it easy now. Thanks for coming. <laughs>